how would you go about grading a clip where you need to color match it to something else? Say from a mirrorless camera to a drone. That's exactly what we're gonna look at today. So in this video, we are gonna match a clip from my Canon R6 that is shot in a forest in Denmark and try and match the colors to a clip from Bali with my drone. And the common denominator in this is that they both have greens in them. And greens are some of the most difficult colors to work with, or at least they were for me in the beginning. So that's why I chose that this would be a good way to showcase how to match colors and what techniques I would use. So what I've done is I've taken this drone clip and I've already put a grade on it. So I know how the workflow worked, but essentially it's the same if I'd taken any other clip from anywhere else and tried to match it to look the same as my Canon R6. So we're gonna jump into DaVinci Resolve and we're gonna see what we can do to match the colors and make them look as close as possible to the same and why sometimes you might not want them to look exactly the same. So let's head into DaVinci Resolve and take a look at it. So we're inside DaVinci Resolve and this is the clip that is already graded and is our reference point. And this is the clip that we're gonna try and see if we can match it to. I said it's start in two different locations across the world and they probably won't look anything alike when we start working with it. So let's jump into this clip. And one thing that's important to know is that I've actually chosen to put this into the Vinci White Gamut to grade within that, just to give more flexibility and have it in the same color space. So that's maybe the only little tweak or thing that I know that I can control compared to if you try to match it to a movie scene or something. But I still recommend that you put it into the Vinci White Gamut and Intermediate, so that's exactly what we're gonna start with. Put a color space transform on here and I copied it to this one and we're just gonna put in the Input color space here, Cinema Gamut, Canon Cinema Gamut, and Canon Lock Free for the input gamut. Put it into DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. And then the last one here, we're gonna put it into DaVinci White Gamut and Intermediate as the input, and Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4 as the output. Now I'm gonna add a couple of notes here. We're gonna add around seven notes, I think. And we are gonna have this one as our balance, this one as our exposure, this one as our LUT, this one will be our curves. We can delete this, and then this will be our masking if we need to do anything with that. So this was log to DaVinci White Gamut, and this was DaVinci White Gamut to Rex 9. This will be our focus mask, our highlights, and our shadows, in case we need any of those. And maybe we'll change these out to make it an inside and outside node instead, but we'll see when we get to that. So first of all, how do we start comparing and matching things to make them look like each other. We wanna take a look at how the waveform are looking here. And it's very spread out and there's a lot of information going everywhere. So that's the first thing we wanna match the waveform at least as much as possible in terms of brightness and the shadows. So that's the first thing we're gonna look at. To make it easier to color match, what we can do is we can right click and say grab still, and this will be our reference. So this will be what we are trying to match it to. If we jump into the other clip here then, we can go into split view, this one here, and we can go into split, then we can choose the selected still image to match it to. And you can also go in here and say split screen and then say selected still image in case you don't have this drop down here. And this gives us a side by side view here and let's just make this a little bit smaller. Now, of course we have some black bars, but what it gives us is that we can now see the waveform of the matching clip that we're trying to get and the reference of what we already have. So what the first thing I wanna do is that I wanna add a lot to this one. So I think we're gonna try and go with Faded Forest. That's the one I used in the other one. Say you wanna grade both clips, you're probably gonna use the same lot of the same settings overall and you can copy those between. So instead of cheating and doing that, I'm just gonna add the lot here. And that would be the same as just doing the color corrections or the color grading myself. So from here, we can go into exposure and we can see, okay, the brightest points of this lies very high up, almost at the clipping point, and it doesn't really do that here. So the first thing I would do in the exposure is drag up the gain a little bit here, and then let's see where the shadows are lying. They're lying in a pretty good spot. Now that kind of messed up our exposure of the skin. So what we can do instead is we can pull up the gain, but then lower the gamma a little bit to get our skin looking at the same, at the right place again. And because I'm in this view, I cannot see my skin tones. So because we have skin tones in this one, I'm just gonna switch back to the other view here and see where our skin tones lie. And the brightest part here lies a little bit too high up still. So I'm just gonna drag it down a little bit more, try and see if we can get it to a good point here. I think it's still 
pretty bright at the top, but overall we're getting a pretty nice fall off. So I think that's okay since we did boost the brightness a little bit. So we got a little bit more contrast out of that as well. And if we go back to our split view here, you can see everything looks sort of in the right position, but we need to increase the shadows a little bit. And by that probably also reduce the highlight a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to match the kind of waveform and exposure as much as possible. And I think this lies in a pretty good spot now. We have some shadows that are pretty dark, but not too much. And we have overall a look. This looks a little bit more contrasted, but let's see what we can do overall. Now, here comes the things where we want to start color matching for real. So this was just trying to get the exposure as much as possible where we want it. But if we go into the vector scope, here comes the magic. So first of all, we want to try and get the balance as correct as possible. But what we have here compared to what we had in the waveform is that now everything is on top of each other rather than being side by side. So that of course makes it a little bit more tricky, but we are on the balance node here by the way. And if we pull this up so you can see it a little bit better, if I take my offset here and just drag it all the way down, now I get to see where this image is lying because everything else is blue in the other one. So I can see everything lies around here and pulled towards the yellow side. Now, we don't want this image to lie exactly in the same place because that wouldn't make sense. We have some skin tones up here and we don't have the exact same colors everywhere. We have some reds in the shirt as well that we can see right now. So we wanna get the greens as much as possible in the same place and those lie around this yellow area here. So that's what we're gonna try and match. So I'm gonna reset the offset here and I'm just gonna try and see if we can pull in our greens a little bit more. And already by pulling them down a little bit here, you can see they're closing in on looking a lot more similar already. But everything else also starts to look a little bit green now. So if we were to turn off the split view here, what I wanna make sure is that my skin tones are still lying in the correct place. And now they're lying a little bit too much towards the magenta side. So we have to be careful what we're doing. We can push it a little bit but not too much. So this I think is okay. Our skin tones still look good now. We have to be careful how much we're pushing it. So that's also one of the difficulties with working with skin tones in this. And that's why I chose this shot because, or these two shots, because that makes it a lot more difficult to work around with these things, but we're trying to match things as much as possible. So what I'm actually curious to see now is that we can see these yellow colors here. That would be these if we go into our Qualify again, we move back here. I think if we hover above these houses here, we can see those at this blob here that's between the red and the yellow, and that kind of makes sense. So if we go to the other shot here, what I want to see here is this actually lies in the same place. So we know that our yellows here are lying in the same place. We can see our greens here are moving towards the yellow side. So for a balance perspective, I think that's pretty good. We've moved it to be a little bit more green overall, but that's okay for now. I think we got closer to where we want to be. So looking at our still image again here, we're heading into the curves, and this is where we can really fiddle in the smaller details. So of course here we have to be careful because we have skin tones. So first I'm gonna lock in the skin tones here by drawing around my face here, and I'm just gonna pull them out a little bit more to make sure we have everything protected that is the skin tone color, which will also include these colors down here. And then I'm gonna try and make something around the blues here, the greens to lock those in and then we're going to try and protect the blues in a way here so we can work with those colors individually and for the skin tones first of all I just want to try and see if we can get those lying as nice a possible place as, as we can so I'm just going to try and get those to lie on the line here trying to move things around a little bit and seeing where they lie and it looks like they're exactly on the line now so they should be good in terms of anything. And we've only changed these a little bit, but not too much. So I think they still match pretty well with our other shot. Now we can go into the greens and we can pull up our split view again here and we can see, okay, we want them to be more yellow. So what I can do is I can take a point here and I can try and move them a little bit more to the yellow side. And we should see those colors move up a little bit here. So we can see that gives us a little bit of a better view and they're already starting to get a little bit closer in that kind of faded green look. Maybe we need to pull this in a little bit more, something like this, and we're getting very close here. We can see if we move this around, now we move it down, now they got way too green, but moving it up, we can try and align it to where the other colors lie. So around here will give us the same look. And what I'm looking at here is this color moving up and down. If we wanted to try and do something similar in the saturation here, 
I'm going to try and lock these in. What we can try and see if, if we pull this up, we get more saturation in these areas, which is good because we want them to lie in a closer spot. We're also getting more saturation in the blue areas here, which is not what I want. So I kind of want to just stretch out these colors without affecting too much of these, which I am also moving in here. So maybe need to move this back a little bit to make sure we're not moving those too much. Those are a little bit more orangey now. So if we move this down somewhere around here, they are a little bit too red and that's because of the skin tones as well. We want the skin tones is my priority here rather than these. So those will not be the exact same, but it's also not the same roof that it doesn't make sense necessarily. So we are matching the greens here and I think we're getting somewhat close but they're still a lot more saturated here. So I want to try and see if we can push this saturation quite a lot here to see if we can get somewhat closer. And if I'm pushing this up, we're actually pushing the greens to be a lot closer to what they are here. And I think overall now we're getting pretty close to the same look as we have over here on the left. So for starters, that's a very good point to be at and then I'm just going to add a few masks here so I think we're going to drop the highlights and the shadows but just have a focus or an inside and an outside node so we can rename this inside and this one outside and this can just help us control the colors a little bit more we could also just select the greens if you wanted them to be more saturated that could be something for a second but I want my subject here which is me in this case to stand out a little bit more adding a little bit of contrast here and then maybe just that was the opposite way around so we're going to redo it here for the inside mask just dragging this out adding a little bit of contrast just did it on the correct note this time adding a little bit of gamma to not have it too dark something like this and then for the outside note i'm just going to drag that down a little bit to make it a little bit darker see what we are at here and i think we are getting pretty damn close to where we're supposed to be. We could add another one here for curves and say green set. So we want to saturate the greens a little bit more. And what we can do here is we can take the qualifier and we can put in the qualifier here and we can select our green tones here. So if we have that selected, we should get something that is the greens. We don't want the skin, so we want to pull it back a little bit. And here we have pretty good selection of the greens. We don't necessarily need the saturation. The luminance, we don't need either. We, do, we just need the hues and we want this green area. Adding a little bit of blur and a little bit of denoise. Now we have full control over our greens here. So what we can try and do is we can go in and add just a little bit of saturation to try and boost them a little bit. And just with that tiny, tiny boost, it's almost invisible, but it is there. I think we got really, really close to having the exact same greens here. I don't see a big difference in those. I even see that the oranges here are the same as the oranges here. So overall, I think we did a really good job. The only thing I'm seeing now is that the brightness of my subject here might have been a little bit too much. So heading into the waveform again, we're seeing here the skin tones lie way up. So I'm gonna head into my inside node and just drag down my highlights a little bit to make sure that my skin is protected a little bit more here. Just overall getting it, we might have added a bit too much contrast, so raising the shadows helped a little bit as well. And this is all where we're getting at now. So to recap what we're doing, we're trying to compare the two here, and we are taking balance first to try and move the colors as close as we can on top of each other first by dragging it all the way down to the blue or some other color to see exactly where these colors are lying, then trying to match them as best as we can protecting our skin tones if we have any to make sure that they're lying in the correct spot. And if we're matching to something that also has skin tones, of course, that makes it a little bit easier to get to that point. Then when we have our LUT and our exposure and our balance set in and we have our conversion correct, we go into the curves where we start to move things around a lot more. And you can see we're really getting to that green color. If I turn this off and turn it on again, really saturating and moving the green around to match this green that we have over here. And then in this case, we also saturated the greens just a little bit more to pump it out. You can see the vector scope here moves out a little bit when I turn it on. 
just to try and match the saturation a little bit more. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we don't necessarily need it to be the exact same. It was in different locations. But if you want to try and give away the feeling that it was shot in the same locations or it's a more smooth blend throughout our whole video, then this is a great way of going about it. And then our masking is completely subjective. We could have added them, we could have left them alone. If we turn them off, it still looks great. Turning them on, it's just my personal preference. So it's not really anything about color balancing or color matching in this case. So those are really the tools that I'm using, the balance and the curves, and maybe isolating some of the colors. The most difficult ones to work with for me is greens in terms of matching them because greens can be difficult to work with. And then if you have something that lies in the same range as the skin tones, that in itself can be difficult as well. But other than that, this is how I would go about it. This is how I go about matching colors between scenes. And if you are grading all of them, you can use more or less the same note tree and then just adjust the curves and the balance between the different clips to try and get as close as a result as you possibly can. So with that said, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I always love to help you guys. And if you have suggestions for other videos or things you want to see, different kind of clips from different cameras you want me to try and grade or match, I'm up, always up for that if you can send me some. So with that said, I'll just leave you here and catch you in the next video.